What's up everyone? In today's video, I want to teach you how you can use the STAR interview method to get the best results in your interview. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing you need to understand about the STAR interview method is that it stands for situation, task, action, and result. For situation, you need to set the stage for the context of what you're going to be talking about. So for example, you can say that when I was at XYZ Corporation, we had a sudden drop in sales. Now, the next thing you need to talk about is the task. And the task is what you did to solve the problem or address the situation at hand. And for the task, you can say something along the lines of, well, my responsibility at that time was to lead a team to figure out a solution for addressing this drop in sales and also analyze the market trends to propose a new marketing strategy. So essentially, what was the responsibility that you had to address this situation? The action then is what you did to address it. And this is where you showcase your problem solving, leadership and teamwork skills that people really see as an important part of getting a good job done. So for example, you can say you led a team of people to analyze the market trends and came to XYZ results. And the final thing is result. And this is where you want to say what was the outcome of what you did and ideally you want to quantify it with some kind of numbers. And so an example of this would be saying Based on the research that you've done, you designed a new campaign which had a 50% increase in sales in a three month period. And so this would be an example of how you turn things around. Now, why is the STAR method important? That brings us to number two, which is our brains are fundamentally wired to listen to stories. And what the STAR method does is it automatically sets things into a very neat narrative structure so that it's easy for people to follow along and to understand what's going on. It provides clarity, it provides relevance, and it provides depth. And these are things that make a good story. The third thing you need to understand about STAR is that you need to practice it. And when I say practice it, I mean you need to look at what are the common questions that may come up. And I've recently released a lot of videos on common interview questions that may come up, such as tell me about a time, such as give me an example of a time, Anything that is looking into your past experience, these are all situations where you can pull a star story out. And given that a lot of our interviews nowadays are all based on Zoom, one thing that you could do is create what I call a story jukebox, which is essentially what are the stories that you have in place to address each of these questions. By having a star structure story for everything, you can easily just have that open on the side of your interview and when you're asked this question just pull that answer out and answer on the spot with confidence because you've practiced it and you've thought the story out and everything is out there in point form and even if you can't use that document in a zoom setting like if you are in an interview in person what you can do is ask for a minute so that you can write that story down star and write it down on a notepad so that you can give a coherent answer rather than what a lot of people do, which is just riff and ramble and then lose the people who are interviewing you. And in addition to the jukebox, one thing you got to do is tailor the response of the answers towards the company's values and culture so that if you've done the work beforehand, you can have a more relevant story that's aligned to the company's values. The fourth thing you need to understand about the STAR method is there are several common mistakes that people make. The first mistake is that it is too simple. Not enough details, not enough meat, not enough numbers. And if it's too general, it becomes one of those canned answers where it does not leave an impression. There's no impact in terms of the numbers. And that's why I said earlier, you gotta quantify things. That's why it's important to give some specifics towards this answer. The second mistake that people tend to make is that it is too deep. You get too deep into the weeds and you just lose the people because they're like, I'm not part of this project and this is not interesting and it's not relevant to me. I'm here in this interview because I have to and they just, they just get lost. So you got to understand, you got to be dialing in the specifics, but also not go into the weeds and lose the people. And the third and final mistake that people tend to make is that they do not give a positive outcome. They tell the story, they tell the results, but they do not give it a positive spin and say, how did this impact the business? At the end of the day, people are hiring you to solve problems for the business. 
And if you don't give them a clear story in terms of what was the impact on the business, it's kind of like, okay, you did a thing. So what? And that's it. That's a quick summary of the STAR method. Basically, it is now the gold standard for answering all interview questions. And I highly encourage you to practice this for your next interview. Because at the end of the day, as interviewers are asking you these questions, they're not thinking whether you're using the STAR method and you don't really need to reinvent the wheel. Just follow the formula and you will give a much more coherent answer rather than riffing it. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like it, please give it a like, share, subscribe, follow wherever you are. If you have any thoughts about it or if you've got any other formulas, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear more. Take care, everybody.